Okay, this will be our last set of examples um, for integration by substitution. Uh, there certainly are a number of other ones that are done in the textbook. Um, there, there's quite a few in this section. Um, we're not looking at the examples where we're tinkering with inverse trig derivatives and things like that, but this is enough to get us going for now. Integral of tan x, what do we do with that? Um, we haven't seen, we haven't seen, the, we haven't come across any function whose derivative gives us tan, right? So how do we, how do we deal? Well, first thing is realize that tan is sine x over cos x, right? Okay. So we can write it like that. Does that set us up for substitution? Let's think. Do we see composition? I don't see composition, I see division. Okay, oh, but you know, dividing is like composing with reciprocal, so there's kind of a composition going on there, right? The other thing, of course, you look for is, do I have one function whose derivative is also sitting there? And yes, on both accounts, right? The derivative of sine is cosine. Ah, but the cos is in the bottom, that doesn't help, right? Because I want, I want the derivative times dx, not 1 over the derivative times dx. Ah, but the derivative of cosine is, well, minus sine, right? And off by a constant is good enough when we're doing substitution. So we say, well, let's try that. Let's try letting u equal cos x. Then du is minus sine x times dx, okay? So this becomes minus the integral 1 over u times du. Well, we've seen that one plenty of times, right? This is minus the natural log of the absolute value of cos x, plus a constant, if you like. Leave it there if you like, or um, we could move that minus sign up, right? We could say, oh, this is like, you know, the natural log of the absolute value of cos x, you know, to the minus 1, right? Take the reciprocal. Oh, but we know what the reciprocal of cos is. The reciprocal of cos is secant, right? And 1 over the absolute value is, doesn't matter whether the absolute value is inside or outside there. So we can write that as the natural log of secant of x plus c. All right, and then you don't have the minus sign out front. Okay. How about secant? Secant turns out this, this one is tricky, okay? So remember what the derivative of, of secant is. The derivative of secant is secant times tan. Um, how do we do an antiderivative? This turns out to be one that, you know, for a while people didn't really know the answer to this one, okay? Um, sat around for a while, eventually it was figured out. Uh, I'm not sure who came up with the answer, but I'm pretty sure that whoever it was uh, they got to go around feeling pretty damn clever for a while because here's what you do. You take secant and you div multiply by secant x plus tan x. And well, we don't want to change anything, so if we multiply by that, we should also divide by it. How does that help me? Well, that helps because up top, if I multiply through, this gives me secant squared, which happens to be the derivative of tan. Secant times tan, well, it is just secant x tan x. Well, that's the derivative of secant. Huh. So, I have this sum of two terms, right? secant squared plus secant tan, which just happens to be the derivative of what's on the bottom. That's really nice. We have u is secant x plus tan x. du is secant x tan x plus secant squared x dx. And this whole thing well, it just becomes 1 over u times du, just like here. Natural log, absolute value, secant x plus tan x plus c. 
Cool. All right, we'll stop here. We're going to come back. We're going to do one definite integral involving substitution, and, uh, and then that's going to be it for the videos on substitution.